Good morning, Philippines! I am back. I'm so happy to be back again. I was out for quite a while. Kung ilang araw ba yun? Most probably, well, almost 10 days. I'm just saying, I was very busy for the past few days. I guess if you were able to listen to my uh, last stream, I said that I started a new work, a new contract. So, yun. So, I'm back to my usual UK routine. By the way, it's 9.45 p.m. my time, Central Standard Time. And I bet it's uh, 10.45 ng umaga sa Pilipinas. O, oh, diba? Most probably ngayon yung mga tao doon preparing for their for their lunch. Diba? Ano araw ba sa Pilipinas ngayon? I think it's Sunday in the Philippines. Oh, by the way, sa mga sudyante ko po sa Pilipinas, uh, watch out. I'll be home. I'll be home again this coming June. Ayan. So, may ticket na po tayo. Hindi ko lang sasabihin kung kailan. O ano, ano, ano araw yung arrival ko baka ma- maudlot. O di ba? Baka may mag-jinx. Anyway, good morning po sa lahat at sa mga nurses natin dyan, especially sa mga kakilala natin sa Cagayan de Oro City, Davao City, uh, Baguio. And for those nurses who will take the uh, nursing licensure examination, May Ngayong May eh, the board exam ng Pilipinas May. At sa mga sudyante ko dyan sa UAE, last week ba yun or two weeks ago? So ayan. No, kanina, wala talaga akong plano mag-live. Eh, yung sudyante ko na si Mark, shout out pala kay Mark. Ito na Mark yung hinihintay mo. Sabi niya, Sir John, pwede ka mag-stream mamaya, discuss ka ng ano, discuss ka ng isang concept. Sabi ko, anong concept? Sabi sa akin, cardio ko, oh my God, Mark. Sawang-sawa na talaga ako sa cardio na yan. I'm so tired discussing that. By the way, may nagpapagood morning. Good morning, Sir John. Hello, good morning. Ayan, sabi ko sa kanya, pwede ba ibang topic na lang? Sabi niya, Sir, ano OB? Oh my God. Bago matapos yung gabi ko, mga nga mo loki ako niyan. Sabi niya, ay wag na lang, iba na lang. Sabi niya, blood. Sabi niya, blood. Kasi hindi pa daw ako discuss ng blood sa mga live ko. Mag-discuss kaya ako ng blood. Few, few, few months ago. Months ba yun? Sabi ko, oh, sige, 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 promise ko. So, yun. Pero sabi ko, mamaya na, kasi nga, magpapahig, magpapagupit muna ako at ito yung kanyang outcome. O, diba? <laughs> at, alam ko, sasabihin nyo, napablatter ko na po, huwag kayong mag-alala. Ito yung problema ko dito, ano? Ewan ko lang, ako, ako lang, ha? ako lang ang nakafeel. Pero for those mga Pilipino po nandito, nandito sa Amerika, please correct me if I'm wrong, iba pa rin po yung gupit ng Pinoy. <laughs> iba pa rin yung gupit pag asyano yung gumupit sa'yo. Ewan ko lang ah. Pero you know what? Hindi, hindi madali maging hairdresser dito eh. Alam ko. May mga certification yan sila before they can you know, they can render the service may mga kumbaga pa meron silang board examination <laughs> pero alam ko may certification yan sila so yun so nagpagupit ako kanina sabi ko oh my god kinakabahan ako kaya every time magpagupit ako kinakabahan talaga ako kung anong outcome so ito na na-anticipate na- ko naman siya na ganito talaga no choice sabi ko nga eh gusto ko magpagupit sa Pilipinas na lang. Sa kumiga, two months pa yun. Baka pag-uwi ko ng Pilipinas, ang, mo, ang get up ko para akong ermitanyo. Anyway, hello to Jocelyn Lenny Cruz Hit, Hiterosa. Hiterosa. Hi. And hello, thanks for watching Cheng Ortesa Tagupa. Miracle Dagalea. Hello. Hello to Joy Tadifa. And hello to Janet, what's this? Janet Perez Esqueta. Hi there. Kumusta? Kumusta kayo lahat? So yun nga. So correct me if I'm wrong. Ha? Please, please let me know. Yun din bang nararamdaman nyo kung magpapagupit kayo? Meron ako dapat, may, meron akong pinapuntahan dito sa Minneapolis na ang gumugupit, ah, uh, ano yun? Vietnamese. Ang galing niya talaga. Ang galing niya. Ang galing niya. Ang problema, nung tinawagan ko kahapon para magpabook, sabi niya, puno daw siya. Tapos close sila Sunday. 
hindi ako pa din ng Monday, hindi ako pa din ng Tuesday kasi may work ko. Eh gusto ko na magpagupit. Sabi ko, pupunta na pupunta ako ng mall. So, pupunta ako ng mall kanina, doon ako nagpagupit. At ito na yung akanyang outcome, o di ba? Ay nako. What about dyan sa mga sa Dubai, sa Middle East, magaling din sila gumupit ng ano? Or mga mga hairdresser nila magaling din? Just let me know. And we have uh, Miraka, Mi Merakel Dagalea, watching from Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Good morning, sir. Hi, good morning. Kumusta kayo dyan? Sukran. Sukran is thank you, right? And thanks for watching Cielo Aptego. Ano po, para, parang wala ako sa mood mag-discuss. <laughs> parang gusto ko lang magsalita na magsalita na kay nang kahit na ano lang. Hello, Cielo Apego, kumusta ka? Mark, pwede mo bukas na ako mag-discuss ng blood? <laughs> Parang napilitan na, no? Wala lang, no? Ang tagal ko kasi hindi nakapag-stream. Sabi ko, stream na nga lang ako. Kumusta kayo, guys? I'm just excited. I'm just excited to go home. Very soon. So sa mga nag-aabang sa akin diyan sa Pilipinas, alam niyo na ko nung gagawin niyo. Oh, di ba? Ano daw? Nakakolok na. Private message talaga, sa private talaga na message mag-send. Oh, di ba? Anyway, kumusta kayo guys? Ano ng mga balibalita? Uh, for the past few days, nanonood lang ako ng balita, mga of course, news sa ano, through YouTube. Nakakainis yung ano no, yung mga bagong update dun sa ano, sa tawag nito, Bureau of Immigration. Ay nako, sumasakit yung ulo ko. Anyway, So, congratulations in advance for those who will take the board examination in the Philippines this coming May. Kailan ba yun? May 27, 28 ba? Or 28, 29? Basta alam ko month of May. And then, next board examination will be on, that will be on November 11 and 12. I will never forget that. Kasi nga, November 13 birthday ko. So, a day before my birthday, board examination sa Pilipinas. So, Congratulations in advance. Yun na lang siguro magiging birthday wish ko para sa lahat. For you to pass the board examination. O, di ba? O, importante yun. Okay na yun. Hindi na ako, ah, hindi na ako hihingi ng mga ibang birthday gifts. Yun na lang. Yung papa sa kahit na, ang sarap kayo ng feeling kahit na, I know some of you are actually eyeing to, to top the board examination. Kahit na top one lang, Lord, top one. Para sa akin, kahit hindi na top one, mas importante, RN ka. ba? Diba? May RN attached after your name. Ano ba yung RN? Retake na pod? O retake na naman? Hindi, registered nurse. O, ba? Diba? So, I wish everybody that uh, you will pass, you will conquer the board examination. Sana wala ano, yung mga leakage-leakage na yan. Naalala ko, 2006. If my memory is correct, 2006 po yung leakage ng board examination sa Pilipinas. Very controversial yun, ano? At alam ko, even if you will apply here in the US at alam nila na passer ka ng board examination 2006, parang meron yatang annotation dun sa, sa records mo na ito yung board examination na tawag ito na may scandal. O, di ba? Scandal talaga. Ay nako, kumusta na kayo lahat? Dumating din ba sa point sa life niyo na for those who, for those of you who are working, yung parang napapagod ka na magtrabaho, parang ayaw mo nang ayaw mo nang bumangon para magtrabaho, parang gusto mo lang na ano, gusto mo lang nakahiga, manood ng TV. Anyway, kalo ko po magwish ka na maging current ulit ang status sa immigrant. O pwede naman. Anong year ba kayo ano, ang current? 
Anong year ba? Anong date ba yung current? Ngayon. Babalik din yan. Don't worry. Magka-current din yung ano. Tawag nito. Magka-current din yan. Don't worry. Why? Because we need a lot of nurses. Please let me know. Ano ba yung ano ngayon? Ano ba yung... Uh, alam ko, ano yun eh? Tawag, may tawag dyan, di ba? Ano ba tawag dyan? <laughs> sabaw ako ngayong araw. Sabaw. Ano yung mga tawag doon? A priority date. Ano ba? Ano ba? Ano ba? Ano ba priority date ngayon? Search ko nga. Nakalimutan ko na yung mga website. Sagit lang ha. Priority date. Uh, EB2 Philippines. Tingnan natin. Visa Bulletin. Up, family base. Nasaan na yun? Ah, here. For EB3 category, Mexico, the Philippines, Central America, and the rest of the world are current. That's current na kalagay eh. Kailan ba to? Baka matagal na to na news. Tagit lang ha, tino ko muna. Published April 1, 2023. Eh, old na to. Please let me know. Retro nga, gusto ko malaman anong date. So wala, yung last nila na date. Here. Nahanap ko yung website. Ito, 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 ito. Family sponsor. Ito, ano ito. Maybe ito. Ba, mali ba? Ba, mali yung website ko. Okay, let me see. Anong date ba ito? This is under travel.state.gov. EB3, Philippines, June 2022. Final action. Two thousand twenty-two, June. Two thousand twenty-two. Don't worry, mag mag magkakaren din yan, okay? So wag kayo mawala ng pag-asa, okay? And hello to Anne Andres Clamosa. Thanks for watching. Anyway. Ano na mga balibalita dyan? Ano na balita dun sa ano, Bureau of Immigration na officer na nasangkot sa katiwalian? Ay nako. What do you have here? Hello to Jocelyn uh, Domokol. Hi, thanks for watching. Okay, let me share my screen. I will give an overview about blood disorders. 
Ayan. Ano to? Bakit yung mga renin na renin na nakalagay dito? <laughs> Okay. There. So this is just an overview of of blood disorders. A uh, hello from hi sabi niya hi from Florida. Hello Jocelyn and hello to Maureen Yi. Kumusta kayo diyan sa Florida? Napunta ko ning Florida sa bago pumunta sa I went to Miami. Uh Usap muna tayo. As, ano, ba, ano ba bang napuntaan ko doon? Uh, uh, Miami. Tapos I went to Key West. Uh, ano pa yung pinuntahan ko doon? Shout out nga pala kay Peach, ang travel body ko na iniwan na ako ngayon. Mm, yan, kulang talaga yung one week doon. I, I love the weather there. Sana makabalik ako. Gusto kong pumunta yung ng, ano, ng Universal Studio. Tsaka, tawag nito. Anong Enchanted? Ba't Enchanted Kingdom yung sa isip ko? At tsaka, tawag nito, Disney. O, oh, diba? Whiteboard. Okay, this is just an overview of, of blood disorders. Okay? So, intro muna tayo about blood. So, ano mga dapat tandaan pag sinabi natin blood? Blood is the only fluid connective tissue. Do you know that? This is the only fluid connective tissue. Okay? Only fluid connective tissue. And blood constitutes 8% of your total body weight. It's 8% Okay, of your TBW. What's TBW? Your total body weight. So let's say if you weigh 80 kilograms, 8% of that galing po sa blood. Okay? And blood serves three basic functions. If you can still recall this in your anatomy, physiology. Now, what are the three basic functions of your blood? Siyempre, hindi makalimutan natin yung transportation. Oh, really? Yes, blood is important for transport. In short, it transports nutrients. Your blood is also important for Uh, transportation of gases, not only oxygen, it also involves carbon dioxide transport. Uh, blood is also uh, vital for uh, waste products, elimination. It is also important for water, transportation, not only that, uh, waste products, I said that, uh, WBC, okay, transportation of WBC. And guess what? Uh, kaya nga, because, because of the relevance of transportation function of your blood, sinasabi dati ng mga author that blood is considered to be the river of life. Uh, di ba? Taray, river of life. Because, you know, eh, in order for, for, the, for the cells to sustain its normal activity, there must be sufficient, constant uh, supply of nutrients. So with the help of your blood that carries those uh, important nutrients so the cells can survive, You're, you can survive. Not only that, but the saddest part here is your blood will only transport nutrients. Sad to say, sometimes it will also transport microorganisms. It will also transport cancer cells. Okay, apart from your lymph nodes that will that has a vital function with me cancer metastasis, your blood is also a medium where uh, cancer cells can 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 spread all over the body. Okay, so anyway, that's for transportation. Second function for blood is for protection. Okay, protection. How can blood protect you? Well, yes, in the blood, there is a cell called RBC. No, we're talking about protection. In the blood, there is a cell called WBC, not RBC, WBC, white blood cells. These cells will protect you against infection. Okay, not only that, your, your blood also contains a cell called platelet. We call this a short thrombocytes. So this will protect you against bleeding or blood loss. Okay, so that's the second function function protection. And the third function of your blood is regulation. Regulation of what? Regulation of temperature. It has a specific temperature. 
Okay, so technically, these are the three functions of your blood, transportation, protection, and regulation. Now, our blood has two basic components. If you can still recall this, what are the two basic components of the blood? Okay, first is what we call the plasma. Okay, plasma and the second component of your blood, we call this as your form elements formed elements okay plasma is actually 55 percent of the total blood volume and for for the formed elements will be 45 percent of the total blood volume okay let's discuss this one by one let's begin with what we call plasma your plasma this is actually the liquid part of your blood okay this is the liquid part of the blood. You also call plasma your intravascular fluid. That's the fluid inside the vascular area. That's the liquid part of your blood. Since it's a liquid part, so we know we can say that majority of the plasma is made up of water. Correct? So your plasma is made up of water. Okay, it contains water. Big part of your plasma is water. What else? Your plasma also contains also contains waste products, waste products. So when you say waste products, I, waste products, I am referring to what we call nitrogenous waste. Why do we call it nitrogenous waste? Because these are actually waste products that contain nitrogen. Okay, just like your BUN, blood urea nitrogen. Your, your, your plasma also contains clotting factor. Okay, clotting factor. Hold on. I want to say something about clotting factor. If you're the person who meets or lacks clotting factor, you call that disorder as your hemophilia. Okay. So um, a patient who is hemophilic, okay. A patient who is hemophilic means to say that person lacks clotting factor. So that's the implication. If you miss or if you lack clotting factor, you will have a tendency to bleed, right? So there's a risk of bleeding problem. So one management of patient with hemophilia is to transfuse clotting factor, okay? So the, the, the process is what we call your cryoprecipitate. So what we do here, not we, what they do, okay, not, not nurses don't do this, okay? What technicians do is they will freeze the blood and once the blood is frozen, they will scoop the precipitate, your cryoprecipitate, and that is your plasma. And why do they transfuse plasma? Because it is in the plasma where you can find the clotting factor. And guess what? One complication of cryoprecipitate transfusion is that it can cause yellow discoloration of the skin. Okay. Now, is that what we call jaundice? No. Okay. Remember, jaundice is true that there is what we call yellow discoloration of the skin. But the underlying cause of jaundice is this discoloration of the skin is attributed to liver problem or if not liver problem related to gallbladder problem. So we call that we use the term jaundice, but in your in your cryoprecipitate transfusion, the yellow discoloration is not related or not associated to liver problem or gallbladder problem. But this yellow discoloration is due to pooling of plasma. Okay, so we don't call that jaundice; we call that a short icteresha. Icteresha patient is icteric. Okay, there's yellow discoloration, not due to liver problem, not due to gallbladder problem, but related to pooling of plasma in the body. Because again, we transfuse plasma to patient with hemophilia. Okay, next, what else? In the plasma, in the plasma, you can also find in the plasma electrolytes. Now, when you say, what, what do you mean when you say electrolytes? Electrolytes are actually uh, minerals. These are charged minerals okay charged minerals so it could be a positively charged mineral or a negatively charged mineral right so when you say positively charged we call that your cation okay a negatively charged mineral we call that an ion okay say it again so a positively charged we call that as cation okay a negatively charged electrolyte we call that as an ion okay now so your plasma contains electrolytes. It contains water. That is why don't be surprised if there is fluid loss okay, because of severe diarrhea okay, or there is excessive vomiting. What, what will happen to your patient is that patient may, may likely have 
fluids and electrolyte imbalances. Anyway, so we're talking about electrolytes here. So what are there? What are those cations and anions? Now my technique for cations will be your piso. Okay, I guess you know this one. And for an ion, my technique here is pico or pico. So what do you mean when you say what? What, what is this? Piso and piso and pico. So, for example, if this is the cell, okay, this is the cell. For your cation, positively charge of your piso, piso stands for potassium inside, sodium outside. So, potassium is inside the cell, sodium is outside the cell. Potassium in, sodium out. And potassium, sodium are positively charged electrolytes. Okay, positively charged electrolytes. So, these are cations. Okay. Remember when I say electrolytes, these are charged minerals. And when I say an ion, your technique here will be your pico or pico. Pico stands for what? Okay. So you have here your phosphate inside, and then you have your chloride outside. So they are actually negatively charged electrolytes. So remember inside the cell, okay, the most abundant cation is potassium. Inside the cell, the most abundant anion is your phosphate. These two, your phosphate and ions, are inside the cell. That is why one common question in your NCLEX is that about, about TLS. What is TLS? Tumor lysis syndrome, okay? Tumor lysis syndrome, which is a complication of your chemotherapy or a complication of radiation therapy. So remember, one effect of your of your radiation chemotherapy is that it destroys or it kills fast dividing cells. And guess what? Fast dividing cell is a characteristic of cancer cells. So when they kill cancer cells, okay, when you kill cancer cells, okay, that can cause release of electrolyte from intracellular to extracellular. So this will result to release of potassium from intra to extracellular, so causing increased potassium in the blood. And release of phosphorus from your uh, intracellular to extracellular, causing hyperphosphatemia. Okay, so that is why part of your TLS of tumor lysis syndrome is that patient will end up having hyperkalemia, hyperphosphatemia. And guess what? What is the relationship of your phosphate, phosphate and calcium? They are actually what inversely proportional, right? So when phosphate increases, calcium absorption is affected, causing hypocalcemia. So these are actually key answers in your qualifying examination for your select all that apply, especially for tumor lysis syndrome. Okay. Now anyway, that's that's for your that's for your electrolytes. And what else in your plasma? In your plasma, you can also find in your plasma protein. Okay. Protein. There are two important proteins that you need to remember in your examination that can be seen in your plasma. And what are these proteins? You have your antibodies. Okay, antibodies. Okay, you also call antibodies as your immunoglobulins. And if you can still recall, these are your gamed or gamed. Immunoglobulin G, immunoglobulin A, M, E, D. Correct? And the second Abundant protein in the plasma is your albumin. Remember, albumin is a form of protein. That is why if there is protein deficiency, there is decreased albumin in the blood, we call that your hypoalbuminemia, and that will result to decrease in the oncotic pressure resulting to fluid shifting. Anyway, so these are two important proteins that you need to remember when you talk about plasma. Okay? By the way, speaking of antibodies or immunoglobulins, immunoglobulin G, letter G, let me change the color of my ink. Immunoglobulin G is the most abundant immunoglobulin, okay? And uh, this immunoglobulin can pass or can pass the placenta. And this immunoglobulin is associated with autoimmune, just like your multiple sclerosis and then your Guillain-Barre syndrome. Immunoglobulin A, okay, immunoglobulin A, on the other hand, is uh, present in your, what do you call this? Uh, breast milk, okay, your colostrum. Immun immunoglobulin M is common during bacterial infection. Immunoglobulin E is common during allergic or hypersensitivity reaction. 
there is why there's such thing as what we call uh, immunoglobulin E associated asthma attack and D unknown effect. Okay, anyway. So these are things that can be found in your plasma. And again, plasma is the liquid part of the blood and a big part of your plasma is made up of water. And another component of your blood will be your form elements, okay? And when I say form elements, there are actually three form elements. If you can so recall, you have your RBC. You also call the RBC as your erythrocytes. These RBCs are responsible for carrying gases, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. And the normal RBC count ranges from 4.8 to 5.4, okay, millions per cubic millimeter. Sana convertible to cash. Ano? Kung convertible to cash, so ay naku, ayoko na magtrabaho, mag in cash ako always. Okay, tama ba? So 4.8 to 5.4 millions per cubic millimeter. And another form elements will be your WBC. You call this as your leukocytes. So it ranges from uh, about 5,000 to 10,000 per cubic millimeter. Other book, other book, uh, 4.5 to 11,000. Kanya-kanyang book, may kanya-kanya silang mga tawag ito, mga values. And of course, last will be your platelet. You call this short thrombocytes. I mentioned this a while ago. Your, your platelet will protect you against, against uh, bleeding, right? So a normal platelet count ranges from 150,000 to 450,000 per cubic millimeter. Baray. Okay? Now, just uh, terminologies you need, to, you need to recall. What do you call that condition if there is too much RBC? If there's too much RBC, we call that your polycythemia. A decrease in the RBC, mababa, is what we call anemia, right? An increase in your WBC, increase, mataas, we call that as your leukocytosis. A decrease in your WBC, decrease, mababa, we call that leukopenia. Platelet, an increase in the platelet count, mataas ang platelet, we call that your thrombocytosis. A decrease in the platelet count, we call that as your thrombocytopenia. So when you say cytosis, it's increased, it's elevated. When you say penia, mababa. What if silang tatlo mababa at silang tatlo mataas? Anong tawag natin doon? Pag silang tatlo mataas, okay, increase RBC, increase WBC, increase platelet, okay, we call that condition as sure, polycythemia vera. Okay? Pag silang tatlo naman mababa, Okay, a decrease in the RBC, WBC, and platelet. We call that condition as your pancytopenia. And guess what? Pancytopenia is a characteristic of a condition called a plastic anemia. Okay? So decrease, decrease sila lahat. Okay? Now, paano ba na form yung blood, Sir John? Okay, let me clear my screen. Okay. So this is your blood formation. Blood formation. Blood is actually formed in your red bone marrow. Red bone marrow. If you can still recall, there are two types of bone marrows, the yellow marrow and the red bone marrow. The yellow bone marrow is important for fat deposition. Am I right? Your lipids or lipids. I don't know how, how you say it. Your red bone marrow is important for blood formation. And where can you find the red bone marrow? That depends on the age of the person. For children, the red bone marrow can be found in the long bones. Okay? Long bones. Samantala ang red bone marrow sa adult. Sorry. For adult, nakikita sa mga flat bones. Just like your iliac crest. Diba? That is why if you can, if you can still remember... One common site of bone marrow aspiration biopsy for adult is the iliac crest because that is where you can find the red bone marrow. So the site of red bone marrow differs sa age ng pasyente. Okay? Anyway, so inside the red bone marrow, there is a cell. drawing tayo. There is a cell inside the red bone marrow. You call that cell a sure pluripotent. Okay? Pluripotent stem cell. Now, what do you mean when you say pluripotent? 
When you say pluripotent, it means to say that that cell will divide into different types of cells. That's pluripotent. So when you say pluripotent, it is a cell that will eventually develop or divide or transform into different types of cells. It's not the same with omnipotent, not the same with impotent. They're different words, okay? Anyway, who's watching right now? Uh, hello muna tayo, bati muna tayo kay Christy Estabilio, Janina Fernandez, thanks for watching, Loida Castro, Arthur Redilias, hi to Pamela Avila, hello to Eleron Palmero, thanks for watching, pretty, Velasco, tali na pangalan. Hello to Karin Gallego. Thanks for watching. Sofia Reyes and Catherine Navarro Salmo. Hi. Anyway, let's go back. So this pluripotent stem cell will divide into two. Okay. We'll divide into two. First is what we call the myeloid stem cell. And the other one is lymphoid stem cell. The myeloid stem cell Okay, is responsible in transforming that into RBC, WBC, and platelet. Okay, that is why if there's such thing as acute or chronic myelogenous leukemia, myelogenous, it affects the myeloid. Okay, so when you say lymphoid cell, okay, the lymphoid, okay, it will only produce two cells. Okay, what are these? The B cell or the B lymphocytes and the T cell or the T lymphocytes. Okay, now re remember this. The B lymphocytes or B cells, okay, will form into plasma cells, okay, and responsible in producing immunoglobulins or antibodies. Remember, I mentioned this a while ago, and what are this? You have your gained. Okay, and guess what? Your B lymphocytes. These are actually cells that serves as a precursor for what we call humoral mediated response. Okay, so this is responsible for humoral mediated mediated response. If you can still remember this in your in your immunology concept, humoral mediated response is a, a, a form of response activated during bacterial infection, allergic reaction, uh, that, that, that's, your, that's your humoral response. So, samantala ang T lymphocytes or T cells na galing sa bone marrow, technically, parang wala siyang silbi. So, kailan siya magiging useful? If this T lymphocytes goes to your thymus. Thymus. Where is your thymus situated? Anybody? Where can you find your thymus? Where can you find your thymus? Please don't tell me the thymus can be, find, can be found in your brain because that is an incorrect answer. Okay, where can you find the thymus? Your thymus is situated where? Behind your sternum fronting the heart. So technically over here. Can you see me? Behind the sternum fronting the heart. When you were still young, your thymus is actually big. It's huge. But when you grow old, when you age, the thymus size decreases. Okay? It decreases its size when you grow old. Anyway, so why is it important for T lymphocytes to go to thymus? Because in the thymus, that th those T lymphocytes now will undergo differentiation and proliferation, making your T lymphocytes a more uh, specific, making your T lymphocytes now helpful okay so it will transform the t lymphocytes into what we call helper t cell okay it will transform your t lymphocytes to become memory cell it will turn your t lymphocytes into a suppressor t cell and last it will turn your t lymphocytes into killer cells or some will say it's cytotoxic cell. Anyway, your helper T cell is the cell a target of your HIV infection. You also call this as your CD4 CD4 cell. The one we check once your patient is receiving an ARV, an antiretroviral. Once the CD4 cell is low, remember, 
once a CD4 cell is low and you have this opportunistic infections, you are now diagnosed as AIDS, acquired immune deficiency. Okay. Anyway, so from, from, from the from the bone marrow, the T lymphocytes will go to your thymus. There it can it will undergo proliferation and differentiation, making it more useful. See? And guess what? If if B lymphocytes or B cells are precursor for your humoral mediated response, your T lymphocytes, chanaman yung cell, responsible for what? Cellular mediated response. Cellular mediated response. Right. Nag-incorporate talaga ng immunology concept. Ang cellular mediated response, active yan siya during viral infection. Okay? Viral infection. Yung mga viral infection. Again, humoral, common, activated during bacterial infection, allergic reaction. Yun. Samantala, ang cellular mediated, common yan siya na activate during viral infection, graft versus host reaction, mga ganun. Okay? So see, this is how blood is being formed. Can you imagine from a single cell, which is pluripotent, remember pluripotent? Remember I said pluripotent means from a single cell, it would turn into different types of cells. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng pluripotent. Okay? I hope this one is clear. Now, we have different blood types. By the way, if you have any questions, let me know. By the way, hello to Janelle Base Escolano. Thanks for watching. Hello to Marky LR, LR, Lactated Ringers. Yasmin Leila. And hello to Ed Pinlak Panlaki. Oh, yan. So, may mga blood products tayo. Diba? Mga blood types. Isya shortcut na lang natin to, ha? Okay, if the blood type of the patient is, let's say, A positive, then we have A negative, then we have B positive, B negative, O positive, O negative, A, B positive, A, B negative. All right. Ayan. Anong dugo ang pwedeng ibigay sa mga pasyente? Okay? So, let's see. So, lagay natin dito, can get. Ayan. So, in short, if your blood type is A positive, you can get what type of blood? Yun yung, yung, yung sagot natin. So, in short, if the patient is A positive, what blood type can you give to your patient? An A positive can get A positive blood, A negative blood, O positive blood, O negative blood. Okay? If the blood type of the patient is A negative, an A negative can get A negative blood or O negative blood. If the blood type of the patient is B positive, the patient can get B positive blood, B negative blood, O positive blood, O negative blood. If the blood type of the patient is B negative, that patient can get B negative blood or O negative blood. If the blood type of the patient is O positive, patient can get O positive blood or O negative blood only. Okay. If, if the blood type of the patient is O negative, that patient can get only O negative blood only. Okay? If the blood type of the patient is AB positive, that patient can get AB positive blood, can get AB negative blood, A positive blood, A negative blood, B positive blood, B negative blood, O positive blood, O negative blood. If the blood type of the patient is AB negative, that patient can get AB negative blood, A negative blood, B negative blood, O negative blood only. Okay. So based on distribution, tell me, if you don't know, if you don't know the blood type of the patient, okay, if you don't know the blood type of the patient, what do you think is the safest blood? Okay. 
what is the safest blood if you don't know the blood type? If you don't know the blood type, what is the safest blood? Anyway, hello to Ana Santiago. Anyway, baka may message dito. Hold on, give me a minute. Oh, I want to see. Ano, kumusta, sir? Ayan, ano, nakikita nyo? Hindi ko nababasa yung mga names. Nakalagay lang Facebook user. Except for this one. May mga iba talaga na lumalabas yung name. May iba naman na wala, walang name. Ito lang, Facebook user. So, I don't know who you are. But sa mga tatanong, kumusta, sir? I am fine. Okay, let's go back. Okay, let's go back to our table. If you don't know the blood type, what is the safest blood? Wala ka bang napansin? Wala ka bang napansin? Regardless of the blood type of the patient, you can give O negative. O negative. O negative. O negative, O negative, O negative, O negative, O negative. In short, if you don't know the blood type of the patient, the safest blood is O negative. Okay? It must be negative. O negative, why O? O is the universal donor. Negative, it means to say that blood does not contain RH antigen. So if there's no RH antigen, it cannot trigger immune reaction. Okay, so therefore that is a safe blood. Okay, now what about the, the universal blood? That is why O negative is said to be the universal donor. That is the universal donor. It can donate to any type of blood. But when you say universal recipient, can you, can you tell me what specific blood can receive any type of blood? It's your AB positive. See this? Look at this AB positive. AB positive can receive any type of blood. So the universal recipient, sorry, the universal recipient will be AB, AB positive. So don't forget this in your examination. The safest blood, the universal blood donor is O negative. Universal blood recipient is AB positive. Okay? So you won't have issue if your blood is positive because it means to say, that you have an RH antigen. You can give a blood with antigen or a blood without antigen. It doesn't matter. Because you came mismo, ikaw mismo meron kang RH antigen. Okay? I hope that is clear. Hello to Tiffany Porpos. Next. <clears throat> Let me clear my board. One common... Ayos, bago yan. Let's talk about RBC first. RBC. Inside the RBC, there are molecules or pigments, okay? We call this molecules or pigments inside as hemoglobin, okay? Hemoglobin, your hemoglobin is actually divided into two. We have the hem and we have the globin, okay? Your hem is actually derived from iron, Globin is actually derived from protein. Remember I said that your RBC carries gases. Gases will actually bind with your hemoglobin. Your hem, it is where oxygen binds. Globin, it is where your carbon dioxide binds. Okay? Now, if you don't have iron, if you have iron deficiency, hem cannot be formed. Without hem, Hemoglobin is not actually what? Formed as well. So a decrease in the hemoglobin because of iron deficiency will result to what? Iron deficiency anemia. So if you have hem problem, most likely it will lead to IDA. But if you have a globin problem, that will lead to another disorder. So pag ang problema mo ay hem, most likely you will have a condition called IDA or iron deficiency anemia. Samantala, if the problem is globin, most likely you will have a condition called thalassemia. So thalassemia is a globin problem. IDA is mostly, or more commonly, hem problem. Okay? So, dalawang class yung thalassemia A, thalassemia B, or thalassemia major. Okay? Anyway. So RBC, ano ba yung, ano ba yung anemia, Sir John? 
is anemia is anemia a disease? Yes, is anemia a disorder? Yes, is anemia a manifestation? Yes, is anemia an infection? No, can infection cause anemia? Yes. Di ba ang taray? So what is anemia? Ang dami mong sinabi, sir, disease, disorder, uh, manifestation. So technically, pag sinabi mong anemia, anemia is actually a condition. Okay? It is a condition characterized. Characterized by a decrease in the RBC count or a decrease in your hemoglobin mass. Okay? So that's your anemia. So nabanggit natin that RBC will carry gases. So what will happen if there's a decrease in the RBC count or a decrease in the hemoglobin mass? So regardless of the type of anemia, they will have or they will share a common problem. So what is the common problem of anemia? Regardless of the type, there will be decreased oxygen carrying ability. Okay, decrease oxygen carrying ability. So regardless of the type of anemia, if you can still recall, what are the different types of anemia? So the way sometimes, kung, kung, kung naging sudyante kita sa review, this is how I discuss anemia. I classify not, I classify, I give the three types of anemia. Okay. So we have this anemia Secondary to blood loss. This is how I discuss it. We have anemia. Secondary to nutritional deficiencies. Nutritional deficiencies. Then we also have, I don't know if you can still read the other, this lower part. We have anemia. Secondary to impaired, impaired RBC production. Okay, so this is how I discuss anemia when I give my lecture. Hello to Miles Regalado Eguia, and hello to Paulo Victor Oarde. Hi to Doxy Anafe Osa. Anyway, so when I say anemia secondary to blood loss, so you know the reason why you end up having this, 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 this problem is because of fluid loss, blood loss. So maybe related to bleeding peptic ulcer disease or bleeding hemorrhoid or you have colon cancer or a bleeding ulcer or bleeding for that, for that matter. So there is blood loss. So this type of anemia can be acute anemia or it can be chronic anemia. So since you know that the cause of anemia is blood loss, so you know that the management is blood transfusion and you have to correct underlying cause. You have to treat what causes bleeding. Okay? Next, it's anemia secondary to nutrition, nutritional deficiency. Ito yung pinaka-loka. Common sa atin to. Bakit? Third world country. Okay? Anemia secondary to nutritional deficiencies. So there are two types of anemias under this nutritional deficiency. So we have this IDA. Okay, that's your iron deficiency anemia. So we know this anemia is due to deficiency in your iron. And don't forget that IDA, common for pediatric with IDA, they manifest this condition wherein they eat an edible food. We call the tripica or pica syndrome. Okay, and what else? Under nutritional deficiency, uh, one effect of nutritional deficiency is that the body will, will produce large cells. Okay, so... Compensatory mechanism because of nutritional deficiencies that the bone marrow will produce malalaking cell. So we call that type of anemia as a megaloblastic anemia. Megaloblastic anemia. Okay, megaloblastic. Now, wh wh why do we call it megaloblastic? Mega, malaki. Blast, what is blast? Anong blast? Ano, yung basically yung sumabog, hindi po. Blast is a cell. So, you say megaloblast, large cell. So, technically, ito yung tinatang natin macro. Macrocytic. Macro, malalaki. Micro is small. Macro is large. Now, why, why is it why is it that 
there, there is what we call large cell production. Gaya ng sinabi ko, it's a form of compensation ng katawan because of nutritional deficiency. The bone marrow will produce large cells. So ang tanong, what is the implication if the bone marrow will produce large cells? The implication here is that since the bone marrow will produce blood and then that blood will get out from the bone, it goes to your bloodstream, right? Because of the large cell produced by the bone marrow, when they get out from the blood, no, when they get out from the bone, going to your bloodstream, madali silang masira. Okay? So, in short, madali silang masira because of their size when they get out from the bone. As a result, since madali silang masira, their lifespan shortens. Okay? So, ano yung normal lifespan ng RBC? It's about 80 to 120 days. Right? So, pag madali silang masira, than expected, oh, yun na yun. Okay, so when you say megaloblastic anemia or macrocytic anemia, dalawang klase po ang megaloblastic anemia or macrocytic. May tinatawag tayong folate anemia. Some book we call this as your folic acid deficiency anemia. Okay, kaya nga kailangan tayong magbigay ng folic acid, lalong lalo na sa mga buntis, di ba? Because the demand, the nutritional demand of pregnant changes compared sa mga non-pregnant. So kaya nga napansin niyo pag buntis ka, binibigyan ka ng doktor mo ng folic acid supplement. By the way, folic acid is important to prevent neural tube defects. Okay, anyway, another type of another example of megaloblastic anemia is your pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia. So in your pernicious anemia, the missing nutrient here Kasi nasa nutritional deficiency tayo. The missing nutrient here is a vitamin. What vitamin is vitamin B12? The tercyanocobalamin or your cobalamin. So again, sa folate anemia, ang deficiency dito ay folic acid. So pernicious anemia, ang kulang naman dito ay vitamin B12. Your, okay, cyanocobalamin or your cobalamin. By the way, uh, the confirmatory test of your pernicious anemia is what we call Schilling's test, wherein we get a 24-hour urine from the patient. Okay? So, sila yung tinatawag natin megaloblastic or macrocytic. By the way, ang IDA, you call this as your hypochromic. Hypochromic. And of course, last type here is anemia secondary to impaired RBC production. So, this is not closely related to nutritional deficiency. This is closely related to bone marrow problem. So, dalawang klase ito, it could be a form of sickle cell Sickle cell anemia. And then we also have here a sure aplastic anemia. Okay? So in your sickle cell anemia, your sickle cell anemia, ibig sabihin, it, it, it's, it's a bone marrow problem where in the bone, the bone marrow of the patient is producing a defective hemoglobin S, okay, for sickling. And when once this Defective hemoglobin is exposed to a low oxygen saturation or concentration. They tend to have abnormal shape. So, the kind of abnormal shape ng RBC, we call that sure sickling of RBC. And what happens is that if there's sickling of RBC, that makes the blood viscous. And as a result, there will be likelihood of the patient to have clot formation. And if there's clot formation, you call that a sure vaso-occlusive crisis, which is a form of a sickle cell crisis. Okay, so things to remember for your sickle cell, hydrate the patient and O2 supplementation. So sometimes lumalabas examination, what will you do first for sickle cell anemia? What will you do first? What is your first action for sickle cell crisis? Will you hydrate the patient, then give O2 supplement or O2 supplement first, then hydrate the patient? The correct answer here is hydrate the patient. After you hydrate, that's the time you give O2 supplement. Why? Because if the blood is viscous, there is poor oxygen adhesion. If you correct that by hydrating the patient. So once you're done with hydration, that's the time you give O2 supplement. Since the, the thing that triggers sickling of RBC is hypoxia, decreased oxygen, so tell your patient to avoid high altitude places. Okay? Tell your patient to hydrate, drink a lot of water, because if not, that makes the blood viscous, increasing risk of clot formation. And one, one management for sickle cell is you give um, hydroxyurea. The reason why you give hydroxyurea is to trigger, to stimulate uh, formation of a fetal, uh, fetal hemoglobin. 
Okay, a plastic anemia, on the other hand, I mentioned this a while ago. Uh, the characteristic here is your pancytopenia, wherein there's a decrease in the RBC count, WBC count, and platelet. So, a patient with a plastic anemia, there is a risk of infection and bleeding concern. So don't forget, because of a plastic anemia, patient is immunocompromised. Admit the patient in reverse isolation, sometimes in NCLEX. They don't use the term reverse isolation. They use protective isolation. So if it's a reverse isolation or protective isolation, the patient is under what type of room? It is a negative pressured room or positive pressured room? Answer, it is a positive pressured room. That is the ideal room for immunocompromised. That's the setting for reverse isolation or protective isolation. So this 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 how I present uh, anemia to my students. Okay, and of course after that, usually we need discuss natin yung uh, polycythemia vera. Polycythemia vera. So what is polycythemia vera? By definition, polycythemia vera is a chronic myeloproliferative disorder involving all bone marrow elements. So technically, there's an increase in RBC, WBC, and platelet. It can be a policy, true polycythemia or a false polycythemia. If, if the RBC is only elevated, that is a false, okay, false polycythemia. A true polycythemia vera is a polycythemia vera, uh, is a condition where in RBC, WBC, and platelets are elevated. Okay, kung RBC lang, the like RBC lang, that is a secondary polycythemia or a false polycythemia, Vera. Okay? So since mataas ang RBC, WBC, platelet, again, prone yung patient for clot, there's always a risk for what we call stroke. And one management here is phlebotomy. So what we do is we remove blood from your patient on a regular basis, usually on a monthly basis. Tinatagalan natin yung ng blood yung pasyente. Now, can we donate the blood taken from patient with polycythemia vera? Answer is no. Why? Sir, bakit hindi mo i-donate? E di ba yung polycythemia, maraming dugo? Eh, yung anemia, konti ng dugo. Yung purpose ko, sir, ibigyan ko sa kanya ng dugo kasi ikaw, marami kang dugo. May polycythemia vera ka. Maganda kang Candidate na mag-donate kasi marami kang dugo. Unang kita ng dugo, ikaw naman ang anemic, bigyan kita ng dugo. O di ba, taray, ang ganda ng purpose mo. Ang ganda ng, ang, ng idea mo. But the answer is no, we cannot we cannot donate that blood. We discourage. Why? Because that is considered to be a defective blood. Okay? So anyway, I hope you learned something, guys. Just let me know if... Let me know if you want me to discuss more topics. Nabor lang ako kaya... Pabiglaan lang na stream. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hello, Ma'am Judy May Cruspero. Hello, Ma'am Navarro na pala ngayon. I miss you. Kasama ko yun na si I. Hello to Keza... How do you say your name? Kezia Lee Nosni at Lumer. Hello to Jennifer Gamilia and Justine Julian. Taray ah, ng mga pangalan niyo. Hello to Wang Goy Montales. Welcome. Anyway, I'm just hoping that the EB status will will be, will change and turn into current status soon. Yung mga priority date natin. Please don't forget the NCLEX RN is different now. It's already your new generation NCLEX RN. Salamat, Sir John. God bless. Sabi ni Ellen88. Welcome. So if you reach this far, pinapusho talaga yung aking stream. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for, for staying and I hope you learned something tonight. I mean, sa Pilipinas today, ano oras na ba sa Pilipinas? It's 11.49 in the morning. Few minutes from now, you will have your lunch break. Ang sarap ng lunch sa Pilipinas. I'm craving for batchoy. Batchoy, tsaka pansit molo, tsaka dinuguan. Oh my God. Uh, ano to? Thank you, Sir Grace from QC. Welcome. Punta kaya ako ng Chicago, kumain lang ng ano. Ay! Tingnan natin kung may mga dinuguan sila. 
Anyway, thank you so much guys for staying. God bless everybody. Keep safe and I hope to see you soon. Adios.